Latoya is a true example of beauty being only skin deep. I'm over her. I'm totally over her and her stank faces and her stank attitude. Hey, what's up and hello? This is the Chris Nicole giving you my views on life, love, and the world of entertainment through my eyes. And this is my review on Love and Marriage Detroit Season 1, The Reunion Part 2. So we start off where we left off with the last episode, Kobe is crying. And I know some people are saying, you know, she's being extra to be called a Kobe cat and especially if it's not true. One, like I said before, Kobe is very sensitive. Two, I think it's deeper because I feel like just based on what we saw the last episode, she felt rejected by Christina. She mentioned she doesn't have any sisters and she's the oldest and the other siblings she have are, you know, little brothers. I think it was deeper than the Kobe cat. She felt rejected. The Kobe cat situation just added on to it. And now that we know that Christina was, of course, pillow talking with her man, now Kobe knows that Christina did feel that way about her copying off of Christina. So, you know, with that, Christina starts to cry and she goes over to Kobe and, you know, hugs her. And she says she never thought their relationship would have gone this way. Um, she brought them on the show. And while they're talking and they're emotional and even Russell gets up to hug Brandon, look at LaToya's facial expression. Just look at her. The smirk on her face, the look on her face. I don't like her. I just don't like her. To me, her and her husband are true examples of divide and conquer. They like to divide and conquer because at that moment, if she truly wanted these two ladies to get back together and rebuild their friendship, that would have been the moment to say, this is what I was talking about, Christina, at the skating event. You know, this is the sisterhood that I was talking about that I felt like you didn't give her. And I'm so glad you guys are doing this now and maybe you can rebuild. She didn't say any of that. She just looked at them and had this smirk on her face like she always does, like she's not pleased with what she's seen. I don't like her. That's just it. I don't like her. And if they come back with a season two, I'm over her and I'm over her husband. But moving on, evil heifer. So we get to the Brandon and Anthony drama. And they keep stressing that Brandon and Anthony have been friends for 20 years, which is straight BS. It is. And if you've been friends for 20 years, that's not friendship. With friends like that, who the hell needs enemies? So. Brandon decides to pull out names of people he's worked with in regards to his business. And of course, Anthony being the little biatch that he is says, yeah, they paid a whole $50 to, for you to, you know, help them at Star Factory. Pretty much. That's what he was trying to imply. And again, he has to start pulling out what he's done and all of his accomplishments and even Carlos says, you guys seem like you guys want to one-up each other. It's not Brandon wanting to one-up Anthony. Anthony wants to one-up Brandon. That's the problem. And even when he gives his accomplishments, Brandon, Anthony wants to shut it down. And then he wants to act like a little biatch and be like, well, you started it. He just simply said he has accomplishments. He has names under his belt. There's nothing wrong with that. But you being the jealous, divide and conquer spirit that you have, you always have to knock him. 
period. So Anthony, in my opinion, both Anthony and Brandon are very insecure. But to me, Anthony displays it in a way that is just annoying as hell. He's very aggressive with his feminine energy. He's a bitch, point blank, period. And so with that, Brandon says, look, I've never known what you've done. I know that you have money, but I've never actually known what you do. It seems like you do a lot of different things. And I would get that too, because we still never saw him and what he actually does to make money on this show, which is a problem for me. You're talking all of this stuff, but we never saw what you actually did for money. Okay. So Anthony tries to say, look, Brandon has seen, I done touched a million dollars. Brandon saw it. How did he see it? How did he see it? I'm confused on how he saw you touch a million dollars. So with that, Eveline Latoya, she comes in and she chimes in, of course, and she says that she didn't like the fact that Brandon implied that he has money from his father and how in the black community, we always assume the worst with how people got their money. Latoya, shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Because again, if Anthony wasn't a freaking bitch like he is, there would never be an issue. There would never be an issue. If he didn't do the things that he did on this show, on this season, Brandon wouldn't have said half of the stuff that he said, honestly. So with that, Christina decides to chime in and says, I'm just trying to understand how when I got into it with Kobe, you tried to say that Brandon was a snake and you didn't want to work with him because of that. Anthony admits, I got mad. I got mad. Not that he was wrong for calling him a snake. Not that he was wrong for, for trying to blend the issues with Kobe with Brandon and business. He was like, I got mad and I went too far, but Brandon also went too far. <laughs> Look, let me tell you something. That's not friendship. And I keep saying that. That's not friendship. And so with that, we get to, I want, actually, I want to get to the publicist in this situation because this whole Brandon and Anthony situation, let's talk about the publicist. Then we'll talk about the whole Christina situation and Latoya, but we get to the publicist, the publicist, and they show us the edited footage, the footage that was taken off and taken off of the show. And Brittany said that Anthony wants the world to know that Brandon is a liar. She says that straight out of her mouth, okay? And then we see her talking to Anthony on the phone, and she doesn't really say what she said to Christina. So at that point, Colby and even Carlos is like, this girl is possibly stirring the pot, and she wants to involve herself on this show. And that could be the case. The publicist could be doing that. Or it could be that she was telling the truth, and but she doesn't want to completely out Anthony for what he said because at the end of the day, she still does business with them. And Anthony kept saying, we could take a lie detector test. Fool, the best liars can pass a lie detector test. What the hell are you talking about? Shut up with this lie detector test BS. Now, here's my thing about this so-called friendship between Brandon and Anthony. 20 years of friendship. So let's just say, let's just say, Brandon did say what Anthony claims he said. That's your boy. That's 20 years of friendship. I doubt you've known Brittany, this publicist, for 20 years. What? was your reasoning or your reason behind actually going to the publicist with that for a friend that you've had for 20 years? 
even if you wanted Brandon to clear the air about what he said, if he said it, her coming to you and saying, oh, I'm about to work with Christina and Brandon, you may have been caught off guard, but you go to your boy, your boy that you claim you've been friends with for 20 years and say, look, uh, Brittany came to me saying that you and Christina plan to work with her, but it's a little fishy, dog, because I remember when you said you didn't like her, so you may want to clear the air on that because it's coming across fake. And I don't want to be looking like no fake dude out here, but you may want to clear that up. That's what a friend would do. You did some snake stuff. You're the real snake in the situation by putting that out there and you claim Brandon's your friend, has been your friend for 20 years. You were never his friend. You've always had an issue with Brandon. You've always had an issue with him. And you wanted to expose that on this show. You wanted him to look bad. But in reality, you made yourself look bad. Because you're coming off like a straight hater. And I hate that word because I feel like everyone wants to say everything is a hater or hating at this point. But you, sir, are truly a hater. So, yeah, the publicists could be messy. But the messiest one out of the bunch is Anthony. And that's my opinion. So we get back to Christina and Evelyn Latoya. And Carlo says to Christina, do you want a friendship with Latoya? And Christina's like, not like this. And Christina said, look, in the beginning, I, I was giving her props. I liked Latoya, but she truly took this Kobe situation and made it seem like I did something to her. And Latoya actually admits that her being hesitant is a part of her personality. And as she's gotten older, she has been cautious with developing new friendships. Well, first things first, Latoya, it's about time you admitted a damn flaw. It's about time we learn a little bit something, like something about you. Because I swear you were like watching a freaking brick wall. You're boring as hell. But here's my problem with this. Thank you for your honesty. But when you're that cautious, you're already expecting the worst. And I think that was the problem with Latoya. She was already expecting the negative in some shape or form when it came to Christina. So when she had the opportunity to say, see, see, I told you so, I told you so, she tried to use the opportunity with Colby and Christina. She already had an issue with her, not because Christina has done something to her, but we find out that she actually got, I guess, some backsliding, some shady ass information from someone who pretty much said that Christina is a user and, you know, Christina is, a, I don't know, a user and some other things that they said. First, she tried to say both of them were, Brandon and Christina. Then she tried to backpedal and say, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just Christina. I've heard some things about Christina. This is why I can't do a lot of people. And this just proves that age has nothing to do with maturity and proper communication. And when Christina, she, Latoya, it's funny how she tries to say, that Christina likes to play the victim because she had a moment of playing the victim in this situation between her and Christina. And she tried to say, I'm a black woman in a white male dominated career. And so when Christina said that about my education, I felt it was a dig. So I threw my education in Christina's face. Um, based on what we saw, you threw your education in Christina's face from the beginning. Christina didn't say anything about your education until you threw it in her face. That's, that's what happened. And even Christina was trying to explain that, like, no, I didn't say anything until you threw it in my face. And so, you know, I just feel like LaToya is very immature. She already had this vibe about not probably wanting new friends and also already expecting the worst. Therefore, she went in gunning for Christina, whether she wants to admit it or not, which is so unfair. Because if that's the case, don't be on a show like this. And hell, 
Don't have friends. If you're already going to expect the worst, don't do that because it's not fair to that person and it's not fair to you either. Just be with you, your man, and your kids, and you could just be happy all together because it's clear you really didn't want a friendship with her. So with that, um, Christina was like, what did I actually do to you? And you could tell Christina was like, no, answer the question. What have I actually done to you in particular? What did I do to you? And then, of course, Latoya playing, you know, victim again, because to me, she was playing victim with trying to say I'm in a a male, white male dominated society uh, society or male dominated uh, industry. She was like, ah, Christina, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. Like, you're doing too much right now. Oh, but Kobe wasn't doing too much at the skating event. She wasn't doing too much. And then we find out that Kobe said, oh, LaToya told me, you know, that I was wrong for screaming at Christina. LaToya, you know, she told me I was wrong. Yeah, but here's the problem. She told you in private clearly that you were wrong, but she wanted to talk mess about Christina on camera. That's the issue. She wanted Christina to look like the bad guy on camera while she told you in private you were wrong and the bad guy in certain areas. I personally, Christina, I wouldn't want to be friends with no Latoya. And honestly, Brandon, I don't even know why you would want to be friends with Anthony at this point. They have both showed who they are. Divide and conquer spirits. I wouldn't want to deal with it. So with that being said, it's funny how LaToya was saying that Christina likes to play the victim, but there were a couple of moments in this episode where LaToya was playing the victim too, and I was over it. Okay, yeah, you're in a white male-dominated career, okay? Okay, you decided to choose that career. And yet you brought up your education, but then you're trying to say Christina gave a dig. No, you gave a dig trying to imply that because she lacks education, you're coming off like you're better than her. But moving on. So with that, we get to that sorry ass man's movement drama and how it was a fail. But Christina says she appreciated the effort, but whatever, moving on. Then we talk about Kobe and Russell. Um, And child, I didn't know Russell was a principal. That's interesting that he used to be a principal. You know what? Now that I look at him, yeah, he he gives me principal vibes. He gives me them, them Joe Clark, Mr. Clark vibes. So yeah, I could definitely see him being a principal. But we find out the last thing that was really worth mentioning is that Kobe is pregnant with her second child. So congratulations, Kobe, because of course, babies are a blessing. Other than that, we didn't learn anything else new. Um, And they end the show. Do we know there's going to be a second season? Don't know. I think they haven't announced it yet. Do I want a second season? I wouldn't mind a second season of this show. I wouldn't. Um, You know, I definitely would like to see how people um, have evolved in some kind of way um and of course there's always going to be some drama especially when you have drama known as uh anthony and latoya eveline um but yeah and i definitely would like to see about christina and brandis relationship because again they definitely have a weird dynamic so i would like to see what happens with them I hope they survive, but they just seem to be like total opposites in the worst way. But yeah, I would like to see a second season. But what do you guys think? Do you want to see a second season? What did you think about the part two? I'm done with rambling on. I was kind of over it. Um, That's why it took me so long to actually give this review because I was just over them in this petty nonsense, just like too old for it. But With that being said, what did you guys think? Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on my next video. Toodles.